being a writer and painter, I am, I dare say, especially um, uh, conscious of the extent to which the visual arts are a language. My talk tonight turns upon this community of expression, at least as a basis of what I have to say. In childhood, the average individual is much more inclined to visual expression than at any subsequent period of his life. Most of us are artists at eight years old. In the uh, great majority of cases, our uh, artistic career ends at the age of 11 or 12. Uh, why is this? Is it uh, because visual expression is an essentially childish activity, as some philosophers have asserted? Uh, as children, our imagination our imaginative life flows over readily into imagery, assisted probably by the gift of a box of watercolors. It is a natural outlet for our passion for storytelling. In child drawings, the child is narrating events and making up tales, usually about himself, uh, where later on, uh, should the habit of uh, narration persist, he will uh, uh, prefer to, to write his narrative rather than paint it. This, uh, while still a, uh, a child, he is usually unable to do. So, in its earliest manifestations, the visual art is a language, and a language it remains. Uh, the language that supersedes it as a medium for um, uh, conveying e imaginative impulses is the more abstract tongue used by all of us to um, communicate with each other, to ask someone to pass the salt or to express our disgust with the weather of the government. This is not a more adult because more abstract language, but it is more convenient. I do not mean, of course, uh, for asking someone to pass the salt, but for imaginative expression. The skills required to use a visual language uh, upon a more abstract plane than the child's hit or miss graphic uh, fabling are so much more elaborate their acquisition demands so prohibitive a length of time that by the arrival of puberty we have abandoned the visual language altogether. Music is another language requiring skills of an elaborate order. Our everyday tongue and its uh, sound symbols um, occupies the role of the pianoforte in the instrumental hierarchy. Uh, musical composition is a purer as well as a more direct language than is literary composition. Visual expression, likewise, is superior to verbal expression for the communication of a great deal of intellectual as well as emotional experience. Uh, such are the indispensable preliminaries. Now, visual expression does not stop at the easel picture or the making of uh, images upon a piece of paper. It is not uh, confined to picture galleries those mausoleums of dead languages. Uh, everything that we see that is not nature but man's handiwork also belongs to the realm of visual expression. Every cigarette kiosk, water cart, policeman's helmet or lamp post is expressing something mm, as clearly as do the words upon a printed page. Mm, almost they are an ideographic language. Buildings, the shapes of streets and squares, the interiors of houses, their furnishings and fittings, or the uh, dresses people wear, speak the same language as Rembrandt or Gainsborough. They are the um, bearers of visual sensations and emotional messages, a, species of, uh, a, a speech of sorts. If they say over and over, something tired or incoherent or dispiriting and stupid, that uh, necessarily has its social repercussions. 
Though the eye may not be so uh, attentive to the things said to it as is the ear, uh, it has access equally to the emotive centers. Uh, these departments of visual art uh, remain with us after we have ceased ourselves upon the termination of childhood to be artists. But now even that language we collectively are abandoning. Uh, Englishmen no more express themselves in buildings, uh, finely designed townships, original interiors. Those uh, communal palaces that one might uh, expect a socialist administration to plan are not even dreamt of, though this is, uh, I think, um, uh, through no fault of the government. Our cities grow in a hideous disorder. They are visual weeds. Our interiors, with their uh, characterless uh, assemblage of necessary objects for sitting, eating, sleeping, and so on, uh, are no longer an active expression mm, of uh, the life of our time. It is as though it were not a time, but a blank, or, at best, a nerveless survival of a number of other times. <clears throat> Even so small a country as Finland has its alto. We have no creative equivalent. In all the, uh, those more public departments of visual expression, we have come to a dead stop. The general impression uh, conveyed by this visual decadence is that there is in fact nothing to express. At this point, let me go back where I began. I asked, you will recall, a question, namely whether the visual form of expression uh, was to be considered an essentially childish activity. But, as I have since pointed out, that form of expression extends far beyond picture-making. It is ubiquitous. We are ex expressing, or not expressing, ourselves visually in every man-made object. And our scene may fairly be described as the most deplorable example of visual expression on record. So now let me put another question. Does this matter? This is a question of uncommon importance, and it has been answered in the negative, but not explicitly, by a number of people. For there is a universal tendency to, re to regard not only visual expression, but all expression as, if not childish, at least not worthwhile. Uh, we can uh, describe it as a crisis of expression, uh, that we have grown out of it, I think, uh, is the feeling. Uh, this uh, extends to music, to oratory, to books, to everything expressive, except the female wardrobe. Uh, take down an 18th century book from your shelves, if you have one, and uh, read a few, a few pages of it. Then do the, do the same with a contemporary book of the same class. Uh, you will find that the latter is a very uh, inferior performance as far as writing is concerned. The speech of the politician uh, is no longer a work of art. In music, where are, are Beethoven's and Mozart's? As to painting, wonderful talent is displayed not only in galleries but in uh, commercial art. But unless the state steps in, Painting will die out entirely, except as a pastime. Uh, as to my water cart and lamp post just now, and indeed uh, that goes for most buildings too, it probably would be said that uh, it uh, would be better that they should express nothing, be, uh, uh, be neutral and nondescript. The abolition of visual expressiveness without being exactly desired, is accepted with indifference, while not uh, definitely approved. There is an aspect of this general uh, disregard for form which may afford a clue as to its causes. There is, I think, a feeling that it is making too much fuss about life, 
to bother with form or with expression. That which we do not express by action is not worth expressing. We are turning away from life. Why so great cost having so short a lease? We are more prone to echo than those living in more settled ages. And, of course, the children of the atomic age cannot but look at life a little coldly, for it may be very much an acquaintance to Passage. But there is something else too. The techniques of science suggest that we are on the eve of changes so revolu of so revolutionary a nature that all that we see uh, appears to have a mark on it, signifying its consignment to the scrap heap. Meanwhile, we live in a ruined world where it is apt to seem a mockery to speak of form or of expression. And yet the vanishing of all form, the decay of the expressive arts, causes us daily to deteriorate. Although visual expression, being silent and confined to uh, optical transmission, we are hardly conscious of uh, when there and do not miss when absent. We are profoundly affected by it. To illustrate upon the simplest level the nature of these influences, a morose and sunless day, or a dirty and untidy room, or contrariwise a bright and cloudless day, or a clean, well-designed, well-appointed office, library, zoo, or workshop, uh, depress or stimulate. Nature abhors a vacuum, but also nature abhors a chaos. Order is as necessary to us as light, uh, f f form is a high variety of order. That nature favours the arts of human expression uh, might be more difficult to convince people of, um, uh, uh, more difficult to convince people of than that disorder um, irks it. But since it uh, prefers order, is it not probable? that it uh, prefers a highly expressive order to just a pedestrian tidiness. However, what we refer to as nature has proved itself in manifold ways and, uh, in and so invariably a matchless creative artist that to question its preferences would be absurd. The inventor of the peacock, the toucan, the red sword-tail fish, etc., cannot be supposed to look askance at the arts of expression. So, for what that is worth, we have nature on our side, or whatever is concealed behind that term. As to a, retro, uh, a retrogression to the uh, mentality of the child or the savage, uh, visual expression uh, 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 in none of its many departments is that. But what would ultimately result in such a retrograde movement of entire peoples to a very primitive plane would be a dying out of the various arts. Nature then would abhor us, and the absence of the visual arts would, I believe, be felt more quickly than any other. If there were time, I would have discussed the prejudicial association existing in many people's minds between art and, arist and aristocratic modes of life, an association which has been quite, fortu uh, quite fortuitous. Later, um, uh, expression itself would demand analysis. It is said that the female of a certain species of spider likes to see good dancing. The male rhythmically contorts himself and thus win, uh, wins a beauteous mate. It is also asserted that a great deal of human endeavour uh, in the arts is a showing off in some form or other. The Chateau de Langer or the Palazzo Farnese owe their existence probably to vanity. Uh, I should ask, of course, what is the matter with vanity? Uh, it need not be antisocial.
We must, I am afraid, resign ourselves to living in a formless world. Artists do not suffer as much as others from visual vacuity, but something should be done as soon as possible to restore some measure of form and of expression to the public, those uh, unconscious beneficiaries of visual elegance.